We've seen terrorist operations emanating from Afghanistan, and there's not much we can do to stop it because we removed everything from there. I'm Colonel Richard Kemp. I was in the British Army for 30 years. I went in uh, 2003 to Afghanistan as commander of British forces there. Our primary functions, we carried out security operations in Kabul. People say the mission in Afghanistan by British, American and other allied troops was a failure because of what happened in 2021. I don't agree with that. Um, it, it was it succeeded in its primary mission, which was to prevent Afghanistan from again becoming a base from which 9-11 type attacks could be launched. So I think that, you know, up until 2021, the British forces and the American forces achieved their primary mission. Um, but in 2021, that ended. And then the actual final withdrawal was a tremendous error by President Biden. We're in constant contact with the Taliban, working to ensure civilians have safe passage to the airport. We are particularly focused on our engagements on making sure every American who wants to leave can get to the airport. Um, he didn't need to do what he did. He didn't need to withdraw all U.S. forces. He, there were relatively few U.S. forces and British forces in Afghanistan at the time, very few. But there were enough there to keep really to keep the Afghan national forces fighting against the Taliban. They fought a very hard fight and lost a lot of a lot of soldiers fighting the Taliban. But they kept fighting. And the part of the reason they kept fighting was because they knew that ultimately the US was there and, and was ready to, to and did back them up with air support and, and, and etc. But they knew the US was there. When the US withdrew, they collapsed. That's why they collapsed, because the US was no longer there. And they, they, they didn't, you know, they, they really lost the heart to, to keep fighting. And today, uh, there's, you know, we, we've, we've seen in various places around the world, we've seen terrorist operations emanating from Afghanistan. Um, we've seen Al-Qaeda coming back into Afghanistan more powerfully than they had been. Uh, Islamic State growth in Afghanistan, other jihadist groups there as well. Um, and we're likely to see, I think, an increase in, in that um, type of terrorist activity coming out of Afghanistan in the future. And there's not much we can do to stop it because we removed everything from there, pretty much. You know, we took away all of our armed forces and with them, we took away our um, intelligence capabilities there. So there are, obviously the West does have some intelligence coverage in Afghanistan, but it's nothing like what it was before. I would say Afghanistan should be one of our major concerns. What happens there? What's going on? What could develop from Afghanistan? There are bigger issues than just Afghanistan, for example, Pakistan, where there is also an insurgency against uh, the government, a uh, jihadist insurgency. When we were in Afghanistan, we were able to, to an extent, interdict that growing insurgency in Pakistan by, particularly during Obama's time, by firing numerous drone attacks at uh, the Pakistan Taliban and at Al-Qaeda in Pakistan. Um, and that was possible due to intelligence capabilities in Afghanistan and um, military capabilities which enabled weapon systems to be deployed from Afghanistan to Pakistan. So that's no longer there, and that's a big concern, of course. You know, there was a recent terrorist attack in Russia that had connections into Afghanistan, into jihadists in Afghanistan. So it's more than plausible that, that we could see, um, you know, development of jihadist capabilities in Afghanistan, which directly threaten our country and lead to terrorist attacks in our country, which was, of course, you know, the reason for, uh, the large part of the reason for our deployment there back in uh, 2001. I believe that Putin's invasion of Ukraine in 2022 was a direct result of what he saw in Afghanistan. He saw a weakness in America, which led to the withdrawal, and he decided to capitalize on it and invaded Ukraine. And I think that's a direct result of that. And I think also the events in the Middle East now that we're seeing you know, involving Iran particularly and their proxies are also a result of an appraisal of American weakness, which comes primarily from um, 
from the withdrawal from Afghanistan. So it had, I think it had huge strategic effects. I do think that these various despots like the Ayatollahs in Iran and Putin in Russia and President Xi in China, they look at Biden and they see they see nothing but weakness and they think they can exploit that weakness. Pakistan is a nuclear armed state. Various jihadist groups have an intent, particularly Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State, have an intent of bringing down the government in Pakistan. And there's not much we can do to stop that now, now that we've withdrawn from Afghanistan. The government in Pakistan is a, you know, obviously it has its problems, but it's a pretty responsible actor, in, certainly in terms of its nuclear capabilities. But you certainly couldn't assume that in, if, if jihadists took over. And whether that, you know, whether they would actually launch nuclear missiles, who knows? They could certainly have access to nuclear materials, which could be used in different ways and provided to, you know, other jihadist groups. So it's it's obviously a major concern, which the Americans have got they're only too well aware of that. And they have plans in place to, if uh, it came to the crunch, they would have plans in place to to try and deal with, with what happened. And of course, there are close connections between the Taliban and China, which of course, you know, has considerable interest and is gaining greater influence, China that is gaining greater influence in Afghanistan. And there are links between the Taliban and other jihadists and Iran, um, which of course also borders Afghanistan. So there's, there's lots of reasons, I think, to be concerned about uh, our lack of any presence now in Afghanistan. China obviously likes to have influence in various different parts of the world. But I think their, their primary objectives in relation to Afghanistan were to, and in Iran, Iran the same, was just to uh, oppose the West. Today, I think China's got a close eye on the natural resources in Afghanistan, and that's, that's probably its primary motive for continuing engagement with, with the Taliban. As well as, you know, the, the, the China, China will align with any uh, entity that, that is opposing the West uh, as part of its wider competition with us, as will Russia. Um, and so, you know, of course, Russia has still has connections in Afghanistan as well. So it's a, it's, it's a complex kind of situation, but one that we should be keeping a pretty close eye on. Let's say there was a major attack launched again from Afghanistan or planned in Afghanistan, um, then that might trigger one of those contingency plans, which might include forces deploying again. Um, but I think short of that, it's unlikely, there's unlikely to be a significant repeat deployment into Afghanistan. I think it's now too late to do that. I think um, it would be a, it would be a, a, a huge operation which would be difficult very difficult to justify it was justified when we originally intervened in afghanistan after 9-11 but now i don't think it's it's uh, feasible at all there's always a limited bandwidth for focus around the world from western countries and no doubt um you know the taliban will be doing whatever they can to take advantage of of that while the eyes are off their country to to you know, to build up their capabilities and be ready to do what they think they need to do.